My design process usually starts out with a thematic idea. And within the first brainstorming session, I'm trying to figure out mechanisms that match that, that theme. And then as, those, as I get excited about certain mechanisms, I'll figure out, okay, does this fit the theme? Could the theme fit this mechanism? And so there's a lot of back and forth between the theme and the mechanisms during that, that brainstorming period, which can last weeks or even months sometimes. Always really in the end, my goal is to make a fun game. And so sometimes there are mechanisms that get in the way of the fun, even if they're what I think is a really clever mechanism. Sometimes the theme will get in the way of the fun. It's easy to make a game functional, and I've received a lot of game submissions that are perfectly functional games. I've designed a lot of games that are perfectly functional, but functional doesn't mean fun. Functional doesn't mean unique or clever. Functional doesn't trigger that part of my brain that makes me solve, might make me want to solve a problem in a creative way, or makes me want to engage with people in a unique way. There are thousands of games that are released every year, and if I'm gonna add to that pile, it better be something that's special. Great news, a black hole just showed up in the galaxy. Whoa! Whoa. Um, and we have developed the technology to throw planets into the black hole. Um, we are all counselors on the Black Hole Council, and we get to decide what happens to these planets. So it's about a 45 minute game of negotiation and a little bit of deduction, figuring out what other people want. Uh, it's basically a brawl, forcing people to do things and encouraging them to do things through money and other nefarious tactics. When I am playtesting a game, I'm looking at how people are feeling. Well, I look at their faces. You know, are, are they smiling? Are they interested? Are they, are they mad? Is it fake mad? Whatever. And I want them to be engaged uh, throughout the process. You know, they can be mad if they want, so long as, you know, within the magic circle of the game. And if it extends a little bit into real life, and that's fine too. You know, hopefully not too much, maybe a little. You gotta, you gotta keep it spicy. Monitoring that regular set of interactions and making sure people are having a good time is super important. If I see that someone is bored, that's a major problem probably that game's never gonna come back, you know? We went to Gen Con last year um, to show off Galactic Debate, which is our second game. And um, I found that there is an event called Publisher Speed Dating. And it works exactly like a speed dating. You sit at a table and you get six minutes with a publisher and they just jump from table to table and you just have to give them your pitch and that's where Galactic Debate got picked up. They were interested and asked us to come stop by their booth and so we scheduled a time with them, we played the game with their team there and they ended up contacting us later and uh, they, they made us an offer. The publisher took Galactic Debate pretty much as is. They didn't want to change any of the art, any of the the cards or the components really, but the one thing they wanted to change was the title. So I came up with the name Cosmocracy and they really liked that. Yeah, you want to look for a publisher who you know you can work with and you can get on the same page with and you're both willing to compromise where compromise needs to happen. Yeah, and I think from our experience with Cosmocracy we learned um, kind of like our new business model going forward is that we're going to try and shop games to publishers um, via conventions like the uh, this publisher speed dating event we did or through uh, email blasts and uh, we're going to record some high quality videos that show how to play the game um, and its major selling points and we're going to try and send all that out first give it a couple months see if we get any bites and if we don't and we still feel like it's a game worthy of creating, then we'll turn to Kickstarter and self-publishing after that. So this is Competition Kitchen. Uh, this is a game that Kevin and I have been working on for at least the last nine months, uh, and it is finally coming to term. Um, it's a boy. Uh, <laughs> so this game is meant to be just like playing a cooking competition show, so just like Chopped, uh, Iron Chef, Master Chef, this is the tabletop version of that. I feel like exactly how I expected I would feel. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, you're always nervous until it's like funded and rolling. Um, until it's done, that's 
how we're gonna feel, I think. I don't know, yeah. don't I speak for you, yeah. No, yeah, uh, there's just like constant warm knot <laughs> in my core um, that doesn't uh-huh. let me relax or breathe fully. <laughs> Uh, and it will be that way for another 26 days or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the hardest part because it's mm-hmm. not in our direct control anymore. We can do events and we can do posts and share on social media, but right. we can't make people pledge their hard-earned money. Right. Uh, so we just have to hope that we have sold it enough and continue to sell it enough that people want to support it and want to get their own copy. Right. I think it, you know, you have to maintain confidence through the whole ride if you want to get it done. Because the moment that you stop, like, believing in it, people, like, people feel it, you know? And I, I think we firmly believe in it, which is awesome. It's hard. I, I personally, I really don't like asking people for help at all. <laughs> and it feels like we're asking people for a handout sometimes, even though we're like really proud of this beautiful game that we've made. And so when we play it and we get to show it off to people, like that's really easy. That's the easier part. It's like, look how f- much fun this is. We can sell the experience, but like once you think about it in terms of a product that like here is money, that's what makes me feel all warm and knotted inside. Yeah. Yeah. Even though <laughs> We have the uh, the Kickstarter campaign on a giant projector on the wall. I kind of want to forget about it and not worry about like mm. how many ticks are we getting towards the goal and just have people learn the game and go like, oh shit, this is fun. <laughs> yeah. And then see what happens from there. We had a really good first couple days. Inevitably it slows down. The middle part is always the <laughs> slowest, but it gives us the opportunity to to do these events and to get it in front of people. and. I don't know. <laughs> it's so it's so hard to say. I feel good until I yeah. think about it, and then I just feel the uh, the crushing weight of everything. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's pretty much in short. <laughs> you make it sound so bleak, Joe. Well, yeah, <laughs> it might be. We might get nothing. We might. They, that's what they say on Kickstarter's front page. All or, all or nothing. nothing. All or nothing. <laughs> Hopefully all. <laughs> Definitely all. Okay. Probably all. Probably all. Probably. I feel safe saying <laughs> you, probably you all. You like to get into the probably all. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Cool.